A very good evening to you, and tonight in the Copa America, we get the first glimpse of the favourites to lift this championship title again. There was a little glimpse of them. I'm, of course, talking about Argentina, the current champions. Even minus uh, Maradona, it is considered that they have a very strong squad indeed, and I think it should be pointed out here and now, despite the fact that they export many of their players, much of the great talent, to all kinds of countries around the world but they did win this title with a largely home-based crew last time out so this does not augur well for the Bolivian team here all diminutive uh, by comparison with some of the other sides uh, Bolivia not uh, given much of a chance to do anything in this tournament for the simple reason they're playing at sea level that's where Guayaquil is the main industrial port of this country, Ecuador, hosting the Copa America. Now, they've beaten Argentina four times in the long number of times they've played, 17 times. They've beaten them four times, but there's a peculiarity about that. All four times have been played in La Paz, the capital city of Bolivia. And the reason for that is quite simple. La Paz is 12,000 feet above sea level. So, unless you're an astronaut or a, a Sherpa in the Himalayas, it's rather awkward for you to put on a pair of boots and play there even if you're as skilled as the Argentinians and that's why they've lost four times up there it's because of that that Bolivia won the championship back in 63 because they were the hosts they do only well in tournaments when they're playing home and away but when you get one off their games particularly away from La Paz they struggle now the Argentinian team as I said minus Maradona but rather surprisingly, one or two players there you might not have expected to see. I'm referring to Fernando Redondo from Tenerife. And the reason I'm surprised to see him is that Tenerife will be playing Real Madrid uh, this Sunday in a very important game which Real have to win to win the championship. Remember, they're very closely tied with Barcelona in almost a replica of the end of last season. Uh, and I'm surprised that Tenerife have given him up. I would imagine that uh, Barcelona might not be all that happy with that. Uh, but anyway, he's there, and he's alongside other players who played in the 1991 winning team. That is Rodriguez and Batistuta. Batistuta, of course, plays for Fiorentina. And it is said that Batistuta, whom you'll see number nine, has decided to stay with Fiorentina, even though, of course, as any schoolboy would tell you, they have been relegated from Serie A. Uh, the Bolivian players, well, they're not exactly household names, but one or two of them are very interesting, including number six, Borja. Now, Borja actually played in the team that beat uh, Argentina in 68, 79, I beg your pardon, 79, the year after Argentina had won the World Championship. And they beat him, of course, at altitude in La Paz. Well, he's in the team here. He's 35 years of age. And one wonders how he'll last the blistering pace of what I'm sure is going to be a tempestuous game. So there are the Argentinians, not the biggest crowd in the stadium. It was, um, it was the first real taste of it. It can hold 90,000. A very strong footballing city with one of the prominent clubs, of course, called Barcelona. Because of the strong Catalan influence in the city as it was uh, making its way in the world. And that slipped inside by Melgar making the first attack. Valdivieso. And I would expect uh, Argentina will be feeling the way in this game as well. A long way to go in this, uh, this tournament. I think the theme I've been harping on is uh, teams pacing themselves. And very often in the opening games of tournaments, oh, that was uh, quite cynical by Redondo. The free kick. As I was saying, very early on in these tournaments, you sometimes get rather 
uh, banal games and largely because teams don't want to give it their all early on. So free kick to Bolivia. Played out there to Melgar. And no difficulty for Goy Kachia, well-known goalkeeper around the world from Olympia in Paraguay. You might remember him from the penalty kick saving in the last World Cup in Italy. And this may give some indication of how Argentina are going to shape for the World Cup itself. Now, let's not pretend, I, I don't imagine for one minute that a team like Argentina or, Bel or uh, Brazil or Uruguay in particular are going to sh show their full hand to the rest of the world as regards the World Cup. On the other hand, I do really think they want to keep the momentum going because they haven't been beaten since they last played in, in Italy. So I think we're going to be seeing an Argentina team with serious intent on the far side, Moreno. Still Moreno trying to get a shot in. And you can hear the crowd in the background absolutely loving that. Already they have adopted the underdog. So the Bolivians may be lacking a little support and finding sea level not to their comfort, but they have the crowd at the back. Picked up in midfield by Franco. A lot of shouting going on at the back as Ruggeri picks that up. Oscar Ruggeri. Only anybody who doesn't know him. World Cup 82, 86. In the Copa America winning team. In the same year, marvelous player. Went to Real in Ancona. Referee today, by the way, Mr. Angeles from the United States of America. Referees haven't been too bad so far, although I do believe that Colombia got a goal that never was the other night, in the sense that nobody could really tell whether it was over the line, and I, I really don't think the officials could either. And they were acting almost with indecent haste toward it. Taking quickly by Ruggeri. You can hear the shouts from the bench in this uh, ooh, third empty stadium. Up goes the goalkeeper. He's not a tall man. Oh, that must be no. Well, well, well. Missed there by Acosta. Well, the goalkeeper Rojas making a real hash of that, and we have noted there hasn't been a single goalkeeper in the tournament so far who can cope with a long high ball into the goal mouth. We've seen some spectacular goalkeeping, there's no doubt about that, but uh, apart from that, whenever the, you give the goalkeeper the chance to think about it, they haven't uh, thought all that superbly well. Oh, very tricky play there by Castillo. As I said, they're not very tall, but they are tricky. Very mobile, fast, slick. But can they finish? I'm beginning to doubt it. They've now set themselves up three times, and the finishing has been rather puerile. Ooh! <laughs> well, even all the experience of Gorkachia. I think he's being infected by this nervous rash of goalkeeping we've already seen in the tournament. Watch it again. Well, he wasn't under any undue pressure. He's only a man of about uh, five feet eight going in against him. So 
Well, just finding their feet, I think, Argentina. Bolivia rather impressive in the way they've gone at them, and that was a late tackle. Well, the referee, I think, uh, probably interpreting that as over overplaying that. So, free kick. Cluster of players and a penalty and there's a deflection. Altibarano coming in there and I think a deflection, yes, certainly that. Corner kick. Really driven in very hard. And the goalkeeper, in any case, was blinded. Chased across there by Altimarado himself. And I think uh, a free kick for that as Moreno goes down. Moreno, a bustling little player. He's been coming in from the right and the left already. And taken out by Altimarano from River Plate. One of the experienced players in his side, just touching 30 years of age. Oh, a little too optimistic, that pass. He's out, he's out, he's out. Argentina were the very first holders of this tournament way back in 1910. Mark you, it took uh, two games against Uruguay to get that, not because it was a draw in the first game. It just so happened that the crowd decided to burn down one of the stands, um, which the organizers hadn't really expected, so they had to start uh, again in another pitch. They eventually beat Uruguay 4-1. So they've left their uh, imprint, not to say the scorching marks in this tournament. And that was the beginning, of course, of long rivalry with the nation across the river from them in Montevideo. Offside. Garcia went forward. From Elgar. On to Echeverri. Put down there by Valdivieso. Mm, I'm beginning to doubt if they have any clear apprehension of what to do when they get near the penalty area. Knock the ball about and run and look very mobile, but I think they might be rather inept near goal. Getty pushing it on. Picked up by Acosta. Now Redondo. A little bit too casual there. Uh, he does very well retrieving that. Uh, Rodriguez trying to go around the outside. Argentinians just easing themselves into this game. I don't think they want to precipitate a hurricane this early. Not at all happy about that. Rodriguez is about to take this. One of the players who played in the 1991. Oh, that's tempting. And up came Ruggeri to try to knock that in, and I think the referee is protecting goalkeeper Rojas. Well, I must say, for a diminutive goalkeeper in front of whom there is an even more diminutive defence, he's behaving courageously, getting up amongst the bigger Argentinians. Watch this again. Now, Ruggeri, I think the referee quite correctly, Ruggeri simply wanted to take the goalkeeper out. And he done that far side, Rodriguez. Winning another corner kick. And you would expect the Argentinians to really capitalize on this sort of situation. 
the only big player, the only one touching six feet there, or two of them, Quinteros and Rimba. Look at number 20 near the near post, for example. Castillo, and it comes. Well, that was very badly placed, and no movement forward by the Argentinian players from the edge of the penalty area, which I must say is very surprising. Another indication, I would suspect, that he don't want to exactly bust a gut over this game. All they want to do is come out and rather clinically win it. Wow, still no scoring. Almost picked up by Melgar on the right. There he has deep little player trying to fight back there. Touch forward by Garcia. And some of the tackling is in the, the rather frenetic uh, character. I, I really think we might yet have a little bit of trouble in this game. To try and decide by Craviotto. Tall figure of Franco going right across the ski screen there. Franco, one of the players from the continent of Europe, of course. Real Zaragoza player, very useful man. And played outside to Rodriguez. Very disappointing final ball into the penalty area so far by Argentina. But they're playing with confidence, so they're not in midfield. They know what they're doing there, all right. Ooh, I told you. A little bit crude, to say the least. Well, the Ecuadorians, while the derisory sound coming from them. Shot there by Garcia. Picked up by Rodriguez and Garcia was complaining to him inside. He decided to push it to the outside and well, you just get the impression the Argentinians haven't yet woken up to the fact that this is a serious game. Neat play by Castillo. Rather neat, sometimes tricky like that as Valdivieso gets away and he's fouled. Mr. Angeles or Angeles right on the spot there, free kick. And all of us who watch European football, of course, will be interested in referees' interpretation of rules. So far, nothing to miss as we go along and free kick to Bolivia taken by Borja. Flicked away back. Ruggieri getting right back into the heart of his defense. Picked by Valdivieso. Neat little ball now to Melgar. Melgar with it. And he cut it back. Oh no, the wrong kind of ball. 15 minutes gone and really that was meat to that Argentinian defense. You can't do all that. Very good work. Get to the line and then put it square like that got to be angled some sort of way and I think uh, a touch of naivety about that I did say earlier on they didn't quite give the impression they knew how to finish how to complete what are very mobile moves in midfield and I think we're beginning to get more and more of that well 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 even as I speak one of them being carted off there now uh, to be honest I didn't think it was all that serious, but uh, Castillo, a penna going down and being carted off. We'll see if there's a substitution yet, hasn't yet come. It didn't seem to me like Penna wanted to take any further part in this game. Coming up on this side, Melgar. 
Well, that's a bit of ball inside. Oh, he lacked control, though. Offside, surely. Yes, Moreno in an offside position. As Rimba, now, I beg your pardon, Echeverri came forward for that original shot, but his control let him down. However, the Ecuadorian crowd lapping this up, the underdog, getting great support from a crowd, I would estimate, oh, something in the region of 18,000, something like that, in this vast and impressive stadium. On the far side, Sandy. Open it up very well. Pushing in there, Peña. That's offside, surely. Very good move there indeed. It was uh, Rimba who came forward on the right. Fired it in very hard and just caught offside and really rousing this crowd. while a couple of them in that offside position. Well, this surely will rouse the Argentines now. Still playing very casually. Oh, beautiful play there by Acosta. And their best move so far is Rodriguez trying to come up on that. Peña has come back on. He slipped on after some treatment there. Hasn't been substituted. He looked half dab when he was carried off. Ooh, that's the lateness of the tackle. We're getting far too much of that. This time it was Sandy who went in there. He was very, very late indeed. And I think he's, uh, I think he's going to be booked for that, quite rightly. He should have been booked about five minutes ago for his initial tackle, or one of his initial tackles. So Sandy, his name, off on the boards. Another booking, of course. Any other time, and he misses a match. The rules of this competition exactly as the same as the World Cup. Garcia back there to Vasquez let me just uh, emphasize the fact that the the Argentinians have not yet been beaten since uh, Italy it's a very impressive record and of course they went on to win the Intercontinental Cup against Denmark that turned out to be a very interesting game indeed and the Argentines really should put it away now Vasquez came in for that couldn't put it away though squandered move altogether interesting to look back on the the team which beat uh, Denmark on penalties and in that intercontinental game Goy Kichia was in goal uh, the other players who were playing were Vasquez, Ruggeri, Altimerano, Redondo, Rodriguez, Acosta, and Batistuta. So we have got uh, eight of the players who played in that match. And it shows you the value to the coach. The coach, of course, is Alfio Coco Basile of continuity of selection, which is so vital to maintain standards. He's been able to hold on to most of his players even drawing in some of the 
European players at times. Oh, gifted. Picked up by Valdivieso. Borja, that's the 35-year-old player I was talking about. Not only played against Argentina in 79 in that famous game, but scored against them as well. That's him, number six, oldest player on the field, 35. And he seems to be panting just, just a little. him tempting the players forward there Rodriguez try to put it round the side well I would have thought he embellished that yeah. <laughs> he's gonna get a free kick out of it anyway but uh, Franco brought down rather well it took them a long time to get him down onto the top let's put it that way The goalkeeper, Rojas. That's a better header. I'm rather surprised the Argentinians haven't been doing that much more effectively. Graviotto came up for that. I make it 23 minutes gone in this uh, first half. Still no scoring. And even yet, you get the impression that the Argentinians are playing well within themselves. Here's Vasquez. Beautifully picked up there, Franco. Well, they're tackling and running uh, with a great deal of zest, sometimes overdoing it in terms of the tackling. Rimba trying to go in. Touch forward by Craviotto. And showing a great deal of skill and brought down there. Brought down by Rodriguez. Free kick. taken by Craviotto Craviotto from Independiente although he's a defender he scored a goal in the 91 uh, championship against Peru and a crucial game there taken away by Costa on this far side Franco good run by Franco and again he should have cut it back They're putting the passes together now, right? Moreno. Free kick.
to Nerano. And Buddy Scooter had, uh, well, drank at that time, had crept forward. Here we have Bobby Bieso. Probably a little ball over to Sandy, who tried to come in from the left. Coming way back for it, Garcia. Vasquez. Redondo edging forward. You feel Redondo, like so many of the other Argentinians, a coiled spring. Ready to let fly when the occasion demands, and it's a corner kick. Just uh, a lack of attention and concentration there, which I think has been the feature of the Argentinian so far. Certainly taking a time about this. The goalkeeper, Goike Chiers, I said, has had a lot of uh, experience. Remember him saving the penalties against Yugoslavia, the former Yugoslavia, in the World Cup in Italy. He's played uh, X Racing and went to France to play for Brest. So at 28, a very experienced man indeed. Where is he? There he is. Crowd of the bag don't seem wildly enthusiastic. Here's Vasquez. On to the Dondo. Redondo hasn't been all that adventurous. This is the first time he's come forward this far. Put in there by Rodriguez. Batitusta was hovering in the background. Cravioto getting in a bit of a muddle, and I think he might get a free kick out of it. Twenty-eight minutes gone, still no scoring. I just get the impression we've been seeing a bit of shadow boxing by Argentine. It's um, a difficult game for them, everybody, in, in a sense, a difficult game. Everybody expecting them to do rather well. In fact, to thrash this team as they have so often in the past. But it is their first match in the tournament. And lacking support there, Rodriguez, as he came forward, now the breakaway. This is Echeverri. Neat little touch. Can he cut it back? Where, oh, where are they? Well, they were standing admiring him as he went forward. I did say, and I think it does emphasize the point, that they are naive in front of goal. I think there's a bit of a, a worry here. That looks to me like Franco down there, and it does in fact looks serious the physio came on and immediately asked for the stretcher and warming up there is Julio Zapata from uh, River Plate now I wonder just how bad this is certainly they've made up their mind they're going to make a substitution well the the first aid men are being very cautious about this. Now, have they put anything on that right leg there? Or is that just a shin guard? It's uh, difficult to make that out. The, the coach, Alfio Basile, looking a little bit concerned about all of this. He is in agony. That is the, the form of Dario Franco coming from the Spanish league, Real Zaragoza. And he is most tenderly being taken off there. And that, that, by the way, is the doctor. So I would imagine that is quite serious as the play recommences. And confirmation that Zabata is on for Franco. There's yeah, the coach. Um, well, there we are. 
Always a sad sight in football, that, and I don't think he's going to take any further part in his game. Uh, that looks a bad one. We'll try and get confirmation of that at halftime in any case. S score still remains nothing each. Yes, I think they are very concerned. Oh, I've seen that so often, I, I don't want to anticipate too much, but I would suspect from all that was going on there and the way that they are dealing with them and looked at the leg that there's a possibility of a break. Well, it wouldn't be too difficult to watch that out, although sometimes it can be um, a ligament, something like the cruciate uh, ligaments, which are now very common in football. That's perhaps uh, a much much more serious injury than a clean break I know that sounds a, a little bit harsh to say but it is from experience of some of the players in European football have been off for something like a, a couple of years a player you saw in the the European the Champions League Ian Durant of Rangers for example had the ligament uh, of a corpse in Los Angeles transplanted into his knee to get over a, a cruciate ligament injury and that, that's the sort of thing they do now so in actual fact a clean break is probably a much better prospect for a player I know it sounds crazy to say that but that's the way of it so we shall see about him I make it now just about uh, 13 minutes to half time. Still nothing each. Picked up here by Garcia. Nice little run to the line now. Who's inside waiting and once again touched away by Quinteros. Well, they really are doing well in front of their own goal. That goalkeeper at times because of his height and fragility looks vulnerable but uh, by and large the defenders just in front of him have kept him away from danger that's the substitute is now on Zapata by the way who just flicked that in front of Redondo Away goes Rimba. Always trying to get this little man who started. Ooh, dear, dear, dear. That was late by Batistuta. Well, referee, where are you? Good heavens. I mean, that was a free kick in a booking if ever there was one. However, Peña. Now couldn't get cleanly through well I thought that was a dreadful challenge by the man from Fiorentina are they showing this again I think they're showing the pass into the box there it was yes I think he was just offside but let me go back to that tackle I mean if the referee is going to be consistent and I think this is one of the worst aspects of modern refereeing inconsistency then that should have been a name in the book. That was deliberately and cynically late. Well, they're really laying it about now, and that time it was Ruggeri. Ruggeri, as I said, perhaps the mainstay of this team right at the heart of it. 31 years of age, plays his football in Mexico now for America. The continental champions, of course. Uh, North American uh, champions. Quickly inside, uh, picked up by Melgar. Good support by Sandy. And then it all peters out as their moves normally do. I honestly don't think Argentina should be all that worried about them crossing over the halfway line at, on any occasion. It's just a matter of when are they going to put the ball in the back of the net. Oh, 
Break by Itchaberry. On the far side, Rimba. Into Melgar. Very obvious one. I think he was trying initially to put that father back because Sandy was coming in from the left. And that was a very high boot, yes. And by Acosta. Alberto Acosta from uh, that very famous Argentinian club, Boca Juniors. We get a close look at Acosta again. We'll uh, talk a little bit more about him so you can identify him. Very interesting man indeed. Second out by Melgar. Put out there to Valdivieso. And almost a souvenir for the little boys sitting behind the goal. This competition has been uh, notorious for the lack of crowds in the earlier stages of the tournament, particularly in the provinces. Well, um, I'm happy to relate that the crowds so far have been very good until tonight. As I said, uh, I put a crowd around about 18,000. Maybe that's a little bit optimistic in a stadium that can hold 90. And the Argentinians want to play this basically their way, easily, at walking pace most of the time. And I thought he'd want a corner there myself, but uh, it's given us a goal kick. And I make it about seven minutes to have time. And the favorite still being held. Still no scoring. There was talk of Maradona playing, but uh, quite clearly he's not obviously he's not the player he was and I think they're thinking the Argentinians of an entirely new generation well this man Sandy is a bit crude in the tackle but he has the spirit of an adventurer trying to come forward as, as often as he can but the final ball is appalling by Cravioto Rodriguez now Vasquez Acosta Vasquez just inside he'll send it wide Cravioto and an attempted header there by Acosta not a very good one there he is he was the player of the year 92 has been around a bit as well, strong player. People thought of him as perhaps the new Maradona. He hasn't quite matured into that. 26 years of age, played in Toulouse and France as well. And a lot of it's ex expected of him, but never really come out of his shell. Although uh, by Maradona standards, that is. Although he's still a very useful player at an international level. Touch there by Garcia. Well down. Costa. Free kick. Across will come Rodriguez to take this. Instructions being given by the goalkeeper Barlo Rojas from O Petrolero in Bolivia. No prizes for guessing that is an oil based uh, company team. There's the free kick. I thought there might have been a little push there by Rimba. And four players offside, including. Batistuta, who let me repeat, is very fortunate indeed. 
not to have his name in the book. For a tackle that was so late, it might have been yesterday. There we are, there he is. Flicked on there by Rimba. And it's not as if the Argentinians are all that dynamic, but I, <laughs> the reason this game hasn't really aroused the crowd all that much, apart from one or two forays by Bolivia, is that uh, the Argentinians have decided that they want to canter, use this almost as a training exercise. As if somehow or other, they, they don't give two hoots for a, a public spectacle. Just want to put this game beyond reach their own way. Shot there by Batistuta. According to my watch, there will be some stoppage time, of course, because of that uh, injury, that lengthy one. I make it about uh, three minutes to have time. Here is Craviotto. Argentinians played normally with three at the back, five in midfield, as they like to say. Uh, a kind of 3-5-2 formation. Guerra, Ruggeri. There he is, wanting a one-two, came forward for it, but he stood, I couldn't get it to him. Looks immensely confident, doesn't he, Ruggeri? And our way, breaking out to Marano, that's a very good ball in for it, ooh! Well, when Acosta came forward, you could see he was really off balance. Watch this, the ball going just a wee bit too far to the left side. Batistuta. Very well covered. I think he's getting rather tetchy out there. The little men around him snapping at his heels all the time. Well, that's a uh, free kick and another cynical one. This time by Craviotto. And I think his name will go in the book for that. Yes, indeed. Yellow card. We're virtually on the halftime whistle. And I don't think the Bolivian player was as badly maltreated as all that. Rather cynical one and, uh, well, he said a worse bump than that before, Echeverri going down. came the physio <laughs> to have a look at that so there we are in stoppage time the Argentinians puzzled by all of this like myself I, I don't think they believe that it was going to turn out to be an, a an ambulance case Nevertheless, we're still uh, waiting for the opening goal. Yeah, I get the impression it's a long way off the way things have been going. But back there by Castillo. There he is again. Ooh. And Melgar ran away from that. Now, what can they do on the counter-attack? They've been building up to virtually nothing at the moment. Here's Valdevieso, and there goes the halftime whistle. Well, now, what are we to make of Argentina? 
I think I might just stick by my phrase of uh, training match for them. They are an infinitely better team, you take it from me, than what we've just been seeing in the first 45 minutes. They're playing so much within themselves, you could almost call it a subterranean performance. And will something break to the surface in the second half? Certainly one hopes so. Uh, certainly also that substitution might turn out to be a rather tragic one for Argentina because Franco looked to have a very serious injury. I'll bring you up to date with that if I get information uh, during the interval. In any case, I'm sure all of us, myself, uh, the viewers and the crowd, want a little bit more from Argentina. They're expected to win. Hopefully they'll do it in style. While during the break in this game, let's look back on the highlights of that very interesting game between Colombia and Mexico. There were some very good goals in this game. Valderrama right in the middle of the picture. Not as fast as he used to be, but still a very thoughtful, creative, silky kind of player. Now watch this goal set up beautifully by Sanchez putting it inside and gloriously finished by Valencia. That goal came in the 34th minute. Not the easiest of chances. But to, to the delight of the crowd, watch that again. It was the Arisazabal who sent it up, in fact, and clipped away. Not driven away, not a bludgeon of a shot. Calculated, and in it went. That was the lead for Colombia, and that came in the 34th minute, as I said. The Mexicans were disappointing near goal. A lot of fancy play in midfield, but they couldn't put an end to it. Well, not until the 60th minute when the ball was driven in there after an uncharacteristic mistake by Cordoba. Alves getting it from the rebound. He had come on as a substitute in this game and perhaps surprised everybody by popping up in the box like that to score. Frankly, I think that was against the run of play and more than they deserved. All the better football was coming from Colombia. And then this uh, next goal coming up. Well, this caused a major controversy because as the ball is scrambled away, could you see it crossing the line? I certainly couldn't. And it doesn't matter what angle they show this from, it's a bit like the search for the Loch Ness Monster. Everybody rumours about it, but you don't actually see it. Just watch it now. Oops, away it goes to the line and scrambled away. They gave a goal, I don't think it was. 2-1 for Colombia. Welcome back to Guayaquil, the players just coming onto the pitch and the sad news about Dario Franco, the Argentinian player from Real Zaragoza, is that he has in fact broken his leg. We hear it's a break of the tibia. He's been taken to hospital and uh, I believe I've already heard talk that he might be taken immediately back to Argentina, so he is out of the tournament. That is sad news, he's a very good player obviously uh, diminishing the strength of the squad nobody wants a broken leg but as i said there are in football now or perhaps even in other sports but in this sport where the stud sometimes can catch the turf and do some damage in the twisting motion there are even more serious injuries than that it sounds very bad indeed but uh, clean breaks of the tibia that uh, that can be sorted out and he'll be back well six months something like that he'll be back to playing fully again the many many a player around the world who've had uh, broken legs I point out to a man who played in the uh, for Juventus in the two UEFA Cup finals which you have seen on Eurosport Julio Cesar who had a very serious leg break and he came back very strongly in 
he doesn't mess about he doesn't take prisoners when he's in the mood so the leg break didn't do it, him any harm as for the Argentina squad there uh, well yeah I suppose I'm disappointed in what I've I've seen so far but on the other hand I think there's a lot more to come as I said it's subterranean more than anything else I think they'll do just enough to win you often said about the Brazilians for example in the World Cup I've been at uh, five World Cups altogether and a lot of the criticism of them in some of the World Cups laterally was that they gave of the best far too early in the competition I'm thinking particularly of Spain in the World Cup there they, they were absolutely incredible in the first handful of games they gave far too much uh, early on people expected of them all the way to do that and then they got a little bit arrogant against it, Italy and suffered and out went one of the most attractive teams I'd ever seen so it's not just a matter of turning on a performance every now and again it's a matter of pacing yourself the Bolivians well I'm sure they're delighted to be at this stage with that scoreline you can see there let me repeat they've already beaten Argentina four times but at altitude 12,000 feet above sea level life is not easy for the normal player the substitute who came on for Franco was Zapata and I'm sure the Argentinians will be wishing to shout viva to him if in fact he can get on the end of some of these interesting crosses which they've been throwing across the penalty area and rather surprisingly taken very well by the much smaller Bolivian defense that's Vasquez good running away across on that far side A little bit of a breeze in the stadium. Absolutely no problems for the teams playing here. It's when they get up to Quito that they'll experience that altitude difficulty. Where some players, you know, when you've gone to Mexico, and that's the best experience I have of players playing at altitude. If they haven't really prepared, they suddenly run up against an invisible wall. The limbs simply will not function properly. Anyway, Bolivia, no problem with that. Their only problem is how to shoot it go. They look reasonably useful up until just about there. And then it's all rather woeful. Part of the substitute down the line. Forward went at Costa. American referee. I think he let uh, Batis Tusta off in the first half. Already yellow carded Cravioto and Sandy. Now this will be taken by Rodriguez. <laughs> A break there by Echeverri. Moreno. Echeverri. This is Redondo strolling about almost arrogantly in midfield as he comes forward. I don't know, but uh, Ruggeri seems to personify the Argentinian style of player through the years. Nice balance, that touch of arrogance and composure. Looks very, very tough.
Pushed away forward by Altimirano. Pushed out there by Costa. Put in by Cravioto. No offside. Cravioto goes forward. And again. And all he played for there was a corner kick. be taken by Rodriguez Ooh, almost right to the head of Redondo as he came forward there there's Redondo trying to go into that And still you wait for the Argentinians to erupt. Nothing yet. Here's Echeverri. I think he's going to try a shot. And a typical Bolivian shot at that. Redondo. As I said, he should really have been playing against uh, Real uh, this weekend. Almost swept forward there, Garcia. It's tempting. And they were outnumbered. Got it well into the box. That's touched away there by Rimba. Beautifully inside to Rimba. Rimba did very well in his own area there. And now they're really putting on the pressure, though. Altamirano. Again, Rimba back. Now the break forward. Lovely little ball. No offside, surely. Well, I think a little unfortunate uh, against Moreno there. Shouting away down the right wing to try and get it forward there to Garcia. On, Running the corner kick. Up will come Rodriguez to take this. Leo Rodriguez from Atlanta. Doing most of his attacking down the right. take that now there might have been a bit of pushing there yes indeed well quite clearly the crowd on the side of the Bolivians and goal there is one of the older players he's 33 years ago that's the opening goal Patis Tuta at long last the deadlock broken
Well, he's done virtually nothing in the game so far. And once away, he took it very coolly indeed, but that was dreadful the way they were so easily taken apart. And at long last, we can hear the Argentinian supporters in the background. Goal coming virtually out of nothing. Well, he took it coolly. That is Tuta, the man from Fiorentina. They call this man back there Batty Goal. And he really is a favorite of the Argentinian crowds. Beautifully controlled. First by the head. Then watch, he keeps his eye on the ball. That never, never varies at all. Steady head and a cool touch and away from the goalkeeper. So, one nothing. That goal coming in the 54th minute. We start there by Redondo, beginning to edge forward now. Up goes Acosta. Whipped away by Quinteros. Now it's Graviotto. Need a little piece of play by Borca. Well, they're responding rather well to that. Valid, yes, sir. Oh, that's a free kick, surely. If you did, uh, we'll get it at the second time. And this referee, I'm afraid, is rather inconsistent. I don't know why Vasquez is complaining about that. Sergio Vasquez wants uh, an argument with the referee, the man who plays mostly at the back, sweeping up and plays his football in Chile. And back also there was Garcia putting in his penny with the referee. Now can Bolivia strike back at them? And I hope the finishing is better from the set position than it is when they're moving with the ball towards the edge of the penalty area. Well, no. I put it on a par with uh, some of the previous efforts. I think I might have mentioned earlier that uh, Argentina need not necessarily worry about every time they cross the halfway line. They look so inept in front of goal. I think that might be a free kick. It is indeed. Another substitute warming up there. Alvaro, it looks to me like. On the far side, Rodriguez. That was a break right through the defense. It came suddenly after the Bolivians had looked so solid there. And he scored that with great relish. Free kick. putting a little more effort into it this half that's uh, Acosta or oh, beautifully put through by Vasquez and uh, by Rodriguez and the miss there by Garcia well that's more like uh, the Argentinian football a bad finish that really should have been put away although the goalkeeper did very well to get out quickly and narrow the angle Rodriguez with the corner 
and none of these corners have been at all affected by Argentina. Loud shouting there by Redondo, who again has that uh, touch of arrogance I was talking about, about uh, strong physique and arrogance. I was talking about Ruggeri. Otto wanted to start again. Taken by Rodriguez. There's Redondo. Oh, very well tackled though. He was looking as if that was a dangerous break. Neat play taken away by Melgar. Vamos, vamos is the shot from the, the bench. Pushed forward by Quinteros, but given away. That was Graviotto. Very good ball. Now who's queuing up inside? Oh, a little bit uh, too predictable, that play. Good run forward here by Acosta. And again, a ball just inclined too far back for Batistuta to come into it. So, Craviotto will take this. Over it goes, uh, Craviotto from Independiente. Independiente, one of the great clubs of uh, South American football, by the way, has won the Copa Libertadores more than any other club, funded by Argentinians, whereas uh, lots of uh, Argentinian clubs were founded by British workers establishing themselves there. Oh, that's uh, down and almost in there. Batistuta again. Well, he did it the textbook way, get up above it and head it down, but just too near his own body and giving it uh, too much bounce. I make it about uh, 17 minutes played, still one nothing for Argentina. This man Batistuta getting a lot of service now. You just get the impression that the Argentinians are now beginning to come out of their shell. Every time that ball is knocked into the back, there's always a player there. Antimarano, Vasquez, Ruggeri. And they're beginning to look stronger in midfield. As I said, there was an element of, let's make this a, a training exercise in this game. And beginning to look uh, even more like that. They're getting stronger, Argentina. Vasquez. We are out here now. Raviotto. Well, we're getting in a substitution. I think it's Rodriguez coming off. And on will come uh, Villarreal. Rodriguez, I think, has had a, a useful game on the right. Uh, what has been disappointing, he's made a lot of very good runs. I think uh, probably his crossing hasn't matched that. I think if he got that right, he would be a very penetrating player indeed. Anyway, Jose Vila Real from Boca Juniors has now taken his place. Another substitution here, 
Number 11 coming on. Uh, 11 coming off. And on comes Alvaro Peña. A couple of Peñas we have on here now. Put forward there by Melgar. Uh, inside to Castillo. Not a bad move at all. Peña, as I said, is now on in place of Moreno. Nice little flick forward there. Villarreal, the substitute. And running down the far side, Altimirano. Ricardo Altimirano from River Plate. Used to play for that club I was mentioning, Independiente. Redondo did that very well. Look at his control and then just looking for a little bit of support around him. On the halfway line and I think this um, team will do very, very well indeed to get another shot at goal. Uh, looks to me as if they're running out of steam, Bolivia. That again was a late tackle. That was a very good shot of it from that low camera. I don't think he's uh, acting at all. Look at the Argentinian. He's not at all happy with this referee. Not that they're happy with any referees. The Argentinian referees, three weeks before this tournament, went on strike because the referee, Javier Castri, sent off five players, would you believe, in Cordoba, uh, after which all referees were, were threatened and their ancestry questioned in a almost fundamental way throughout the country so they went on strike i think it's all over now but the relationship between refereeing and playing in argentina is uh, somewhat tenuous i must say this referee has been inconsistent the poorest referee we've seen so far and maybe maybe not surprising that he comes from the United States of America I, I just don't think they get the same pressurized refereeing that the European referees get an experience counts Ooh. well every now and again the floated one in like that for the likes of Garcia to come forward for just not quite coming off They pushed out. Gilaria got that. Now Garcia. As he pushed back by Villarreal, who's now coming up. Will Redondo coming in. Oh, he got rid of it far too quickly. And now that neat interchange play is being snapped up by Argentina. They're just not allowing them to do it any longer. Craviotto. Now the break. Argentina had pushed a little bit too far forward. And as I said, running out of their steam this side. I think in the first 20 minutes of the game, they would really have made progress there. Well, they touched it around nicely. But this is where they're lacking it. Yes, that's offside. And offside by Peña, the substitute who came on. Well, a nice bold move by uh, their coach, their coach uh, Xavier Ascargota. By putting on an attacker at this stage in the game, I make it mm, just about 22 minutes left. They want to have a go, but they just don't seem to have the ability and the stamina I think is lacking.
Run away across there by Valdivieso. Oh, beautiful touch forward there. Lovely play. Vasquez came forward. And equaled there by a player who's looking more and more impressive, Quinteros. There he is. He hasn't come forward all that much, and that was a little predictable, and he fought hard to get that, and the crowd, if not the referee, are on his side. And I think there's going to be a booking for Garcia. There is indeed. Another yellow card there. And Garcia, yes, he deserves it for that. Almost put a half Nelson on him. So, an interesting uh, situation here. Now the, the way Argentina have played this for the rest of the game uh, has been just to get the bigger men up there because they're playing against diminutive forwards by comparison. It hasn't given them all that much trouble. But time running out. Just about 20 minutes left. Oh, there you are. You're down to right in the way of that. Now that's right out of the blue. And perhaps they're better doing that. Fired in by Peña. The other one. Just laid back. To careful aim. And that was a brilliant save by Goikachia. Now all that entailed was no great passing movement from midfield or the dive forward. Which I don't think they're now capable of. It was just a man chancing his, uh, his feet from way out. And perhaps they'd better emphasize that particular aspect of play now. It's not as if Bolivia were lulling them into a sense of false security. I think they've as I said, they've given a lot of themselves and are now toiling a little. Argentina just playing around. They're quite happy to get two points here. They're not going to run up a cricket score or anything like that. As Batitusta chases that way across to the far side. I was saying about Independiente, all the the clubs in South America, many of them in Uruguay and Argentina in particular, were started by British workers, particularly railway workers, establishing the railway in South America at the end of the, the last century, except for one club, Independiente, which was started by Argentinians. But curiously enough, they worked for a big store in Buenos Aires called, would you believe, the City of London. So the British influence on the formation of Argentina, football has been enormous. And now, of course, the strong ethnic pool of Spain and Italy has taken over. And you could not compare Argentina football with British football any longer. Redondo. Altimerano. I don't think he's uh, too happy with that. <laughs> Regari, with that touch of arrogance I was talking about, how dare you make a decision against me? Regari just strolled through this game. I doubt if there's a bead of sweat on the man. Melgar. Valdivieso. Neat little passing movement to Melgar again. On the Valdivieso. The run forward on the outside. Neatly chested down there by Rimba. And again, the finishing is poor. I think there might have been a slight deflection. Well, all credit to them. They know how to play the football in midfield. 
but the dreadful going near goal. Here's Castillo, in it goes, and popped back out again, as inevitably it is by the much uh, taller Argentinian defence. Oh, now, I really do believe that Garcia, who's already been booed, raked his studs down the legs there. I think I've watched football sufficiently long enough to realise when a player is trying to get at another player like that. I don't know if we'll see a replay of that, but it looked to me as if Garcia wanted to leave a visiting card. Graviotto puts it down and Batitusta, I think, taking a rest now. He scored his goal. Did a little bit of running. Pacing, let me emphasize, is very important. Also, let me repeat the structure of the games. There are 12 teams playing in three sections. The top two going through and the two best thirds in the, 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 the three groups are going forward to the quarterfinals, then the semi-finals, and then the final. Where previously, in all of the tournaments bar four, it's been do done in a, a league formation with no final at all. And now they've got wise with the invitation of the United States and Mexico. And trying to sell this, of course, to the American market. They've now got the cup competition with exactly 15 minutes remaining. Argentina playing in a game which they obviously had intended to win, but perhaps by even more goals. Long shouts coming from the bench as now Batistuta puts it through and just touched away as Acosta came forward. Rimba getting right onto that. Argentina's next game is against Mexico. And then they play Colombia, which should be some game, because Colombia have already showed a great deal of skill. So you can understand why they may be uh, just taking it a little bit easier in this game. We are yet to see the true Argentina. Redondo. Well, I think uh, an indication of what I was saying was Redondo did all the work there, but notice nobody was running around him looking for the ball there's a lack of hunger about the argentinians in this game they let uh, they just stood and watched redondo lose possession i think if the game really were of an urgent nature you would see them running off the ball much better than they are nice little touch there by valdivieso doesn't quite come off now the break what can he make of it Pushed forward there by Acosta. And a very good save. Rojas right behind it. And I think that might be Acosta's first real shot in the game. Which, given his reputation, is very surprising indeed. Again, the goalkeeper alert to coming out just that little bit far, narrowing the angle. And that's an attempted chip. Moreno got to it. And a very good effort indeed. Decided not to blast at it. Try to chip the goalkeeper. And you can see the experience of Goy Kachir there. He just looked up at it as if he was looking at a harmless shooting star. Get the impression the Argentinians are just uh, hoping for the final whistle now. Nothing untoward happens. Well, uh, getting back to my point about not running off the ball, you saw number nine 
That is Stuta there, just standing watching that, that little flick. He should have been getting into the penalty area. Valdivieso. Far side Peña. Back there on an attempted little bacula to Valdivieso, and that is a free kick. Takes a brave man to stand up to Fernando Redondo like that. Fernando Redondo, by the way, you can see that little fieriness in him. He had a right fight uh, with Maradona in one of the games in the Spanish League. So um, there's no kindred spirit of Yulai because they have played in the same squad. Benya. Getting into a mess there is Rimba. Over it goes. Well, the Bolivians uh, only started uh, the football in 1938 as a national side. They're playing fully competitive internationals. Regarded on a level with Venezuela, which isn't all that high, I have to say. Argentina, on the other hand, have enormous resources. 3,000 professional footballers. You compare that to the neighbors across the river, there's only 540. It does show you the enormous strength of Uruguayan football. Ooh. Well, I think that was spectacular looking, but it's a very short. No chance of uh, getting in the net there. Roy Kachia in goal didn't even blink. Watch it again. I just watched it go across the face of the goals. I think the ooze and ass from the crowd came largely from away down the other end. While Redondo has been picking the ball up in midfield, there he is again. He's been a man who's been making it uh, tick there. Played to Zapata, the substitute. Anato Garcia. Here is Graviotto. Villarreal. Oh, that's a good move now. And Graviotto, for an Argentinian player, rather suspect in the way he brought that down. Normally, they get a ball like that, it's killed instantly. It's doing what it's supposed to do, and he couldn't get it there. Brilliantly set up by Villarreal. Corner kick with uh, just about nine minutes of the game remaining. Still one nothing to be taken by Villarreal. Well, there's a leaked header brilliantly saved. Well, that should have been number two. The Argentinians can hardly believe it. Brilliant header there by Baratusta and Odero Deer. Really deserving of a goal, but flicked away brilliantly by Castillo, just uh, by Peña, rather. Peña got his foot to it, clipped it away. And why, oh why, Argentina have not been peppering this defence like that from the outset. I'll never know that again, the suspect. All the goalkeepers in the tournament have been, but this is not a tall goalkeeper at all. And... A rather diminutive defense by comparison with their opponents. And yet, as we saw early in the game, Argentina were rather innocuous with the cross balls. And now for the first time in the game, that uh, head of Abadistusta really penetrating that defense. I just get the impression that uh, Argentina felt they would win this game at leisure or else they would have been trying everything they know, including better crosses. Picked up on this side by Richard Berry. 
Ooh, that's uh, coming in was Castillo just underneath it. He did very well to get there. Coming right in, just a little touch of the head. And now seven minutes to go in a game that uh, Argentina should have been winning much more handsome than they, they are at the moment. Leaving that to Craviotto to take. Nestor Craviotto from Independiente. Run round there and it's Oh, a neat little touch, it's beautifully put in there. Good run into the penalty area. He had nobody inside him, though. Now, Bolivia on the break. Beautifully tested down by Rimba. That's uh, a typical Bolivian shot. Shaped up very well there. And Peña, the substitute, as I said, a bold move by the coach to bring on a man up front. Got himself into a good position, but again, there's a, a flabbiness about the way they try to finish. You, you saw his body there. He just struck out with his legs. There was no great concentration of effort. It was a slap more than a shot. Now we're just under five minutes of the game to go. Could Bolivia do something miraculous here? Only one goal in it. This is Rimba. Looks for a little one-two and gets it beautifully from Castillo. Now where were they to finish that off? That was one of the best moves of the game. And I must say, having written them off, they still got that little football touch outside the penalty area, but the finishing, they don't have that sophistication in the penalty area. That's what they so badly lack. Oh, they, oh well, well, well. This would be arrogance of uh, a, an intense degree by the Argentinians if they were to cop it now and drop a point because they've just been sauntering through this game. All credit to Bolivia. They look to be on their knees about halfway through the second half and now have found an unexpected source of energy from somewhere and surely being pulled back there by Altimarano it's going to be a free kick as Echeverri tried to make the break. That, I think, also, if the referee were at all consistent, would be a booking. But he isn't consistent, and so it's a free kick without the yellow card. the best players on the field but running out of steam that was Rimba Batistuta and with it again notice how deep he is now lying he's come way back and the goalkeeper almost wholly misjudging that and I make it about by my watch there might be a little stoppage time two minutes remaining It does look at this stage as if Argentina are going to pick up these two points. But hardly a distinguished performance. But then again, when you look at um, another favoured team, Uruguay, again you got the impression that they were just acclimatising themselves. That was uh, Rimba almost getting away with it again. 
Redondo tried to get back at it. Here's Redondo in the tackle, but swept away. Cross to the far side. Picked up by Quinteros. And on to Valdivieso. Last little spurt by Bolivia. Can they save this game? Is it offside? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Wow, it's easy enough for me to be saying that from my angle, but uh, watch the ball going through here. Mm. A whisker in it, if at all. I think that might have added to one of the about 20 gray hairs that Ruggiero is showing. Ruggieri. And he's trying to get the Bolivian players away from the free kick, as you can see. Batista uh, hand used, free kick quickly taken. They're aware of the fact that the final whistle should be going any second. I make it 30 seconds remaining now. Bolivia, last chance. Looking for a one-two, it doesn't come off. Now picked up by Rimba, Rimba. I make it 15 seconds remaining. Still only one goal in it. Bolivia fighting hard, but away come Argentina again. It's not exactly weathering the storm, but rather coming to terms with their own surprise at the way that Bolivia have fought back at them in the last five minutes of this game. Stop each time now. And they'll just play it, take it to the corners, keep possession. That's all they want to do. There we are. Experienced side. Not looking for the second goal at all. They're just holding on to it, nussing it, waiting for the final whistle to go. And yes, I repeat my contention that they've regarded this as a training exercise. Ooh! Well, that was purely speculative. I don't think he has the slightest intention other than just swinging it in to go. Garcia. And the goalkeeper who has a tendency to come off his goal line very quickly indeed, almost caught out. And taking all the time in the world to come across for this. Villarreal, the man from Boca Juniors. One of the other very famous Argentinian clubs. And there we are, they take it to the corner. Get another corner out of it. And there goes the final whistle, an undistinguished referee, Mr. Angelos from the United States of America, whose performance has been characterized by inconsistency, brings to an end a game that sees Argentina, the favorites and the champions, getting their two points against a side that played pluckily, intelligently, and quite fiercely in midfield, but with no finish at all, no punch, no drive in the penalty area. And as a consequence, they suffered the only goal of the game, scored by Batis Tuta. Batis Tuta, like most of the Argentinian players, quite content to get a victory regardless of the way they got it. They've got the two points. On now to much more important games in the Copa America. America was brought to you by Nike.